Howdy folks, Grok the Duck Farmer here, and I'm on the FTOG Feed the Beast Revelation server, hanging up here at my little loft area. This is the yellow bed loft, and uh, way over, whoops, too many, anyway, there we go. Way over on the other side, which you can't see because of the beam and stuff in the way. Uh, way over there, that's the red bed uh, loft area way over there. Uh, anyway, I have gotten a few things done a long time ago. I went ahead and captured uh, a, I found a bat and a chicken and a squid and I captured them in the, um, the, the, the golden lassos so that I could make a set of rings. But the problem is, the tough one to get is the ghast. <sighs> And I don't have flight, so that makes an issue. But we will change all that with a little crafting here. Uh, one of the first things you want to do is go ahead and craft this glass cutter. And it's pretty easy to make. Uh, then you grab yourself a ender pearl, and it will cut that ender pearl into a bunch of shards. And we put that there. And then it doesn't matter. Yeah, it really doesn't matter the, the shape that you put it in. This will make for you one of these resonating redstone crystals. And you're going to need a, a bunch of these, but uh, I've already gotten those from uh, doing a lot of mining, and so I, I don't need to make those, actually. Uh, however, one of the first things you do want to make is this, the resonator. This will allow you to make various bits and bobs uh, using GP, uh, the grid power. And let's go ahead and stick that over here for the nonce. And we can put stuff in here and cook it up, but the problem is it needs power, it needs grid power, and I have zero, and zero generated. And so we're going to change that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, hey, what happened? You're supposed to make this. Let's take a look here, this. Oh, oh, I need wood. Well, that's silly. I completely uh, misread what I needed there. All right, so one, two, and we'll steal one of these. All right, yeah, I'll fix that in post-edit. Yep, nobody will notice that I made that mistake. All right, so let's pull that out. I thought I needed uh, those, but I was wrong. Okay, so uh, I need nine of these gears. We'll stick you back in there. And so with these gears, what am I putting here? Oh, okay, I need this. Uh, I need to make the this thingy here, that manual mill. This will give me power if I work on it. And for that, I need polished stone, which is why I had the, the stone sitting above it. And I need one of those there. And polished stone. I've got this stone brick. And if you do a, a, a two by two grid, you get this polished stone. So let's go ahead and get to 28 of those. I need two to go right there. Two, <laughs> that gives me the manual mill. So if we grab that, and I typically just stick it on top just because it's right here and I keep everything together. And at this point, if you right click, and I've got my hand off of my mouse. Once you start, it will continue going. You can even move your, your mouse around as long as you stay on the mill. As soon as you go away and back, you know, you're toast. And we've made one stone burnt. And the, the reason why I'm going through this is I want to make these water mills. Uh, as far as making consistent GP, I find four water mills to be the easiest thing to produce. And if we hit the shift here, whoops, uh, if you have, um, if you generate um, four of these water mills, you can get 64 GP at no loss. If you have more, then you start uh, losing some GP. And, you know, which, it prevents people from making forests of water mills for all their GP need. I'm only going to be using GP for doing um, a flight, and so I really don't care about anything else. So 64 is going to be double what I need, and it gives me a little wiggle room in case I want to come up here and make something, and then I want to go fly, and so that's what we're going to do. Unfortunately, this is going to take a while. <sighs> Am I done? Let's take a look. Yay, I'm done. <sighs> Takes forever. All right, so uh, what I'm looking to do next is over here, uh, I want to make four of these water mills. 
Ta-da! One, two, three, four. And I got two leftover stone burnt because you have to make them in groups of four. And that's okay. All right, so I've got four watermills. Now, these are funky in that they generate up to four GP per side. Now, top and bottom don't count, just the, the four sides. The, the higher the water flow is around them. So I have a structure that I use a lot. Down one, down two, down three. Hey, it's a kitchen. But that's not where we're going. We're going to go over here. I went ahead and set this up. And since there was a big vein of, of with the granite down here, I said, okay, I'm going to use the granite. <laughs> because why not? Uh, let's take this and put that guy right there. And you can see power generating 16. Let's hop up over here. I put water in the kitty corners. Now, if, if you have, because it's generating power from these four sides. And because it's the the highest level of water flow it's generating the most power if this water flow here is one level lower so if i had a water mill here let's do this uh, if i had a water mill right here it's generating three on this one side instead of four because the water flow level is lower so it, it pays to place your water mills nicely and so i've got these here and I've got glowstone where I've got the water source blocks. Just makes it a little bit easier for me to spot where things are. And, and this little arrangement here, it's a five by five. It's pretty tight and gives me all the, 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 the water producing GP that I need. You know, could I make this actually a little bit tighter? Yeah, actually I could get away with four bits of water, but I think I'm five. You know, am I that worried about, you know, saving on water? No. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, but the, the nice thing is now I've got 64 GP. So if I need to put something in here, it says zero is how much is being used and 64 is how much I have available. So if I were to put some stone in here, can I actually? No, andesite can't make. Uh, can I cook up polished andesite? No, no. Oh, well. Uh, if I had uh, some, some polished stone to cook here, it would actually go ahead and, and start processing it right away. And I wouldn't have to use the this manual mill anymore because you're annoying. So, but uh, that's okay. Uh, so at this point, now I've got GP to burn so I can start using these rings. Now, the first thing you need is to snag a chicken and that gives you the chicken wing ring. And that WR... <sighs> combination is hard for me so the the thing ah okay so it is a feather fall if you hold down the the space bar you will actually fall gently to the earth oh that's really nice okay here i've got the extra high jump from my sojourner sash so if i come up over here and and then I hold the space bar, I get a little bit of a gentler fall. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Now it does wear out. It's got that little charge you saw. Let's do that again. Last time I tried to do this, I couldn't figure out how, how it worked. And so it was a very sucky demonstration. But this time, uh, let's go. Alley -oop. And oh, you can also move too. Oh, hey, that's not bad. And we're down because <laughs> it's got to generate power okay so that's the chicken ring okay the chicken wing ring <laughs> otherwise I, I i i say chicken wing ring wing wing <laughs> i have a hard time doing them both all right uh yep okay so this you can upgrade to the ring of the flying squid let's see now this uses one gp so you could get away with some of the other mills uh, like the fire mill. Okay, that's not what I wanted to do, but uh, hit the F11 key and it toggled out and killed my recording. Okay, so a uh, bunch of different mills here. The the lava mill, if it's adjacent to lava, will produce uh, GP water mill we did. Windmill is very variable. You can see the current power is 1.6 fluctuating based on the winds that are going. Uh, fire mill, uh, you can place over a fire and what's that the creative mill yay for creative stuff i really love having the dragon egg mill 
because just one of those and boom, you're, you're done with all you need. Anyway, uh, so you don't need much power for that, but the, the jet propulsion that comes off of the flying squid, that needs 16, so that's a heck of a lot more. And I love that I get these, uh, these uh, golden lassos back because those are mighty nice. So now with this, if you press, you fly up, and so it's it's shooting you up and then i'm 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 trying to use a little jet propulsion at the last when i land so i don't take a bunch of damage because i'm trying not to die again <laughs> okay take a little bit but i've got the feather falling four on my boots so that's really helping this allows me to get up to areas like this on my roof which is very very handy and knowing that I'd have a hard time getting back up here, I went ahead and put all the lanterns and whatnot I wanted up here. Um, it, I can see some dark spots here. Uh, if we turn on the, not the F3, uh, you can see there's some spawnable locations here. However, because I've got the uh, torch, the magna torch uh, in place, I, I'm not worried about m mobs. And so I didn't care about putting torches everywhere on my, my roof. All right, so that's the, the, the ring of the, the, the flying squid, which is not bad for getting into the nether because if you're in the nether and you're looking down and there's a long jump down, we'll jump and at the last second, you just get a little propulsion to stop that uh, fall from taking a lot of damage. Pretty, pretty slick. Now, to upgrade that, let's go alley uh, To upgrade that, we need a bat and I was down in uh, one of the, the uh, mining world caverns running around and I spotted a bat and I said, ooh, 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 ooh. I released the whatever I had in my thing and grabbed the bat and I said, whatever the other one, I can't remember, even remember because I didn't care enough. I wanted the bat, they are hard to find. Um, this needs to go here and this is where the ghast needs to go. And dang it, those ghasts are a pain because you've got to get a hold of them. Now, last night, I I set all this up and got it ready. And you can tell I, I made the mistake of, of not having the wood there because it was late last night because I finally got a ghast. I was in the nether and I was um, at my uh, nether farm. Here, the nether farm right here. Uh, great place for getting lots of XP. And I'd been taking the XP, gathering a bunch of the resources, and then sitting down by my Botania area so I could generate mana. Cough tank. <coughs> and so that was working out really, really well. And 100 levels of, of XP generates a giant amount of mana. Which is very, very nice. All right, so um, all of a sudden I heard a ghast outside. And I went, ooh, 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 where's that? Ooh, that's a little bit north of me. I went running out there and there was a low overhang area where he couldn't get high. And so I was able to use my empty soul vial that I had with me to snag a ghast. So happy because if you use a, we got to go up. If you use one of these uh, golden lassos, it'll say, eh, this is for peaceful mobs. You need to combine it with a drop of evil to get a cursed lasso to pick up um, nasty mobs. And the problem is you can't grab them when they have full health. So I was going, soul vials work great. So I said, I know what I can do. Oh, oh I was able to grab the, the guy very easily because I've got this uh, charm here, my charm belt. Oh, click it right. And it's got ghasts. One of the yeah, kill a few slimes, dang it. Uh, here it is, the, the gas charm. Ghasts can't see you. Well, unless you attack them first. And so he wasn't moving away or reacting to me. So I set up this little area here under my base, and I'm hoping I won't regret this. I want to shift click. Oh, will you not come out? Ah, darn it. Okay, if he won't come out here... Yeah, he will come out out of here, but I don't want him to get out. So I'm going to go to the nether where he's going to be confined and he's going to shoot me a bunch of times. But once I get him low enough health, I will be able to get the cursed lasso. All right, back to the nether and my stuff is just up above there. 
and I put the little trap door to make it easy to get down and he is in the way because I'm going to spawn the ghast in here it should be prevented from going elsewhere and uh, if I right click him yeah zombie pigment has too much health 10 hearts he needs to be reduced down to two and as soon as I start doing that he's gonna start beating on me which is not much fun so get out of the way no no don't walk back in there I don't want you oh hey yeah that's perfect why don't you go over there we <laughs> okay so uh, let's go ahead and spawn this guy and now he's stuck in there which is perfect so I'm gonna take a little bit of damage he's got looks like uh, five hearts and now I got him <laughs> so that that's what you need to this is a perfect little area for grabbing a ghast I like that okay let's zip home All right, and let's go ahead and make this ring. And I decided to go with the the, the, the wing, no, wing. Normally I have the wing without any feathers, but, or anything else on it, but I decided I'm gonna, you know, honor my, my, my duck friends and uh, put uh, feathers on my, my wing. And so if I look, see, I've got uh, little wings. And now I have flight. Now I have creative flight as long as I have sufficient GP, which is mighty nice. Oh, I'm very happy to have creative flight. All right, let's spin around. Uh, let's gather up. These are nice to have, and that's nice to have. And, um, oh, I've got my uh, backpack back, and except it was golden, now it's diamond level. And if I hit to B, it opens up. And now I can put in some of these items for storage for later use. And we'll put that there. And this is a bobble, which I think I will take my band. Yeah, the band of aura can go off and I'll put that there. And before I do that though, I want to not lose this. So I happen to have over here a book and uh, that's my soulbound book. So if we toss the angel ring in there, toss the book in there, and we rename it Gronx. <laughs> That's my cousin. All right, so Grox Angel Ring, because now if for some reason I die and my items spill out all over the place, they're named. So I, I, I should be able to, you know, get the stuff back. Oh, speaking of back, this one is soul bound because I really like my silk touch pick. It's soul bound. I added a nether star uh, over here in the tool forge takes no upgrade points to, to do so but I now have and I think it lasts just one death so if I were to die I would lose the soulbound attribute on, on this pick but at least I keep the pick you know the the matic uh, you know that I don't use that nearly as much but it is uh, nice to have all right so now I have flight I got to double tap and now I have flight yay I love being able to have flight and it's been such a long time since I've had a good creative flight and um, well since the beginning of the game uh, and I, I noticed my uh, bees here have put a huge amount of flowers around in this area and I think I will deconstruct that because I don't need those flowers there but uh, a great many of the the torches have been removed because i i'm not a big fan of torches on the ground still a few over there and if we take a look at uh, my base area let's switch to night uh, i've done a most of this area is done this this is uh not done i also started running across so i'm my plan is to go through and light up my entire island so there's it's it's fully lit at night which gives lots of visibility. And then I can sit there and um, I can also put some mega torches around because there's one right there. And there's another mega torch over here. Where is it hiding? I put a mega torch over here. Or did I put it underneath there? I think I put it underneath in here. Yes, I put it inside my um, my tower. Uh, and just to, just to kind of stop 
mobs from spawning. So there's one right there in the, the staircase, one in the tower. You can see that one over there. That's also marking where a, a good spot for astral sorcery is. But now that I have flight, I can go up high and do my astral sorcery. Because I believe that being higher up helps. I've done very, very little with that. And so I may uh, do some work with, uh, with some other people to help out with that. And now that I've got the, the height here, I can come over and say, you know, I don't want a torch right there. I want, I want an invisible, well, practically invisible light. That's working right. All right, there we go. And then I had a couple up here at the top. Yeah, they can go as well. Yeah, I, yes, it's okay to have lights. Nope, you're in the wrong spot. I want to be on top. There we go. Oh, no, missed it again. So let me aim a little. Oh, nope, I missed. <laughs> let me aim a little bit above it. Nope. I am having definite hard times putting it on top. There we go. And you just right click and you can break it. There was another one down here. Go away. And last. There we go. So this no longer has the, the, the torches on it. It's just a stickly thing, you know, that I like to do. And I can easily come over here to the, uh, the shark outside my base. And I heard that, uh, oh, there is a cart in here. Okay, uh, he told, Beth had told me that uh, the, the little trip is ready. So let's uh, hop in, get going, and let's see what it does. Wee, ooh. That's a nice hallway. This is very cool. It's a little loud. I'll have to fix that, but... Uh... I think this is the end. Wow. Oh, oh, don't, 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 don't. <laughs> let's hop out. Uh, let's grab that. I gotta fly. There we go. <laughs> Alrighty. That is cool. That is very cool. And unfortunately, there's a cart there at the last. Okay, so let's hop out and grab that before it goes away. Okay, so he's got an equivalent shark on his end. <laughs> that's pretty cool. And that's cool that it teleports like that. I've not played with those uh, those rails. Let's look at those rails. These are the teleporting rails from Extra Rails. Those are pretty slick. All right, I will uh, get out of the shark mouth. <laughs> That that's a fun little design. I love the chiseled teeth and holy cow that was a long Spot back if we take a look at my waypoints and turn on Grokberg. How far away is it? Wow 1600 that is a long <laughs> shot away Holy cow All right, so uh, Here's what I'm gonna do uh, whoop, I can't show us. I'm going to see if I can do a quick tour of his base since he uh, set this up, but I'm going to ask permission before I actually record this. I haven't heard back from Bethed, and so I'm not going to reveal his base without his permission. And um, I'm uh, now that I've got Creative Flight, I'm looking at uh, doing some base tours uh, here on the Revelation server, just because it's a little bit easier to get about and show some of the stuff that people have been doing. I've got flight. I've got lots of flight. I can get around, you know, it's, it's a little feathery, which means I've got to take care of the, the feathers and, and groom them and comb them and all that sort of thing. But I've got creative flight, which means I can start building high, which I like to do and not worry about uh, falling down and, and taking damage because you also get with these rings feather fall. So no more fall damage. Oh, so nice. And exploring the nether is much easier now with this uh, because, you know, you don't worry if you fall down. You can just fly around. And quite often I patch 
lava spots up in the, the, the ceiling so they're not pouring around because that has to be all rendered and that's, yeah, I don't like them. Makes me feel bad. Anyway, this has been Grok the Duck Farmer here getting some creative flight and enjoying it here on the FTOG Feed the Beast Revelation server. And thanks for watching. Bye. Whee!